Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. Um, Keith, two guys, how to. And I uh, was just working on this uh, punch buggy. It's a, really a tub buggy because it's like a bathtub. It's a 63. Um, and it's just bolted onto an old Volkswagen Beetle frame. So uh, I was out here just messing with it. We grabbed it in uh, uh, Troutsville, Virginia the other day. I had been sitting and uh, I saw it. I knew it had potential. And you can see it right there. It's got that old nostalgic uh, 60s going into 70s paint job. Headlights are there, the tires, the rims. It's got the five lug, bigger rims. Gas tank comes up out of the, the spout comes up out of the front, which is cool. Um, we're gonna put a Volkswagen emblem on it. It's got the wipers on it, all stainless steel, the marker lamps, the headlights, all tires. This tire is a little roached, but uh, surprisingly enough, uh, it turns, it rolls very easily actually. I, I moved it around myself today even with that big old tire. But you can check it out. Uh, it's got the 1300 single port motor on it. Dual exhaust. Um, interior's not bad. It's got the bolt on roll, roll bar, which uh, probably would rip off if you flipped it. It's got that nostalgic aluminum window. The, true true old school mirror it's a solid it's not some repop it's got your brackets here uh, your snaps and it's got your brackets here that hold on this canvas top that I took off uh, uh, during transport and it's got these wood poles which are kind of kind of cool that uh, they go in this little spot up here and one in the back on this roll cage and that keeps the dome right there for when it's sitting or going down the road, they probably had it on because the, the top was uh, kind of twisted and snapped into these little quick snaps here. And, uh, and it has a couple more up underneath here. And the top would just stay on. So uh, I'm going to redo those. But uh, you can see the floor pans are solid. It's got a little bit of surface rust, but no holes at all other than these weep holes where the old seatings were and to kind of let water drip out. Uh, it's got your seat belts hooked up. Uh, these kind of, you can see them right over there. They're a newer style, older, but uh, they just kind of go around and clip right here. Emergency brake's still here. Of course, the brake cables are broken. It's got your old school Hearst style shifter on it. Just a wood dashboard with your speedometer. And one, uh, what is that? Just a, an oil pressure gauge on it. We're gonna hook up another couple gauges. It had a, uh, your gas tank there, which is busted out. It's a shame the, the little lens is kind of missing on it. Uh, and we'll try to maybe put a, a couple gauges under here, bolted down under there for coolant and temperature. It did come with four keys and a title, uh, which is rare. And I'll get you a, just a total look at it there one more time. It's got the roll bar on the front or the little push bar, which is nice. It's actually not a bad deal. Um, a buddy of mine wanted to buy one, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna end up letting this one go. It's got good potential, it's got the back seat. I got a battery sitting in here and I got my, my cleaners in here to get this thing started. And it's I got a little bit of carb clean, a little bit of starting fluid, some WD-40 and some gas and that Deer Park water bottle there. And uh, long story short, anytime you buy one of these, uh, a lot of them are locked up or seem to be locked up, but you can spin this motor. Uh, let's see here, put this here. Usually you can spin it over. And you can see there I'm moving it by hand. So the whole crank. So this motor isn't seized up. I've never started it. Um, it hasn't been washed or ran probably in who knows how long. I would say 10 years plus, because you can see by the deterioration of the dashboard, this piece and that piece is missing and this is just falling off to nothing. Uh, it's got you know your moss and typical algae build up on the, the steering wheel. It had two bucket seats in it. I yanked those out and threw them in the old uh, 50s uh, or the 40s. I can't remember even what year that is, 50 something. I don't know, we got so much crap going in and out of here. I threw them in the truck now just to keep them dry. But it had two bucket seats in the back back here as well as in the front, but we're not going to run those We're going to run some kind of race seat that can sit outside that way if you leave it outside It doesn't get rained on but back to the motor if you go and look at one of these and you're unsure and You want one, but you're not sure if the motor seized up or you can get it running Just first and foremost go and spin this thing here if you can move this motor over like that 
she's free and that's got potential to where we can get it started. This has the one, one little carburetor in the middle. It's got dual exhaust. Uh, it's got the old style with the condenser and the distributor with the distributor cap and there's a rotor button in there and there's a set of points inside there and you got this old little teeny coil. Uh, so and that, that would explain this old 1300cc motor. They came back in the 60s and that's when they most likely built it and it's just kind of sat around um, with some upgrades to the tail lights. You can see there's different holes here, different things that they've got, the antique tag from Virginia. So let's get this thing, uh, let's see if we can get it running. For the first time, and I'd say over a decade, the guy I got it from never got it running and the guy he had it from, or he got it from, it had just been sitting. There was leaves and debris everywhere. I cleaned it out the other night. I yanked the seats out. Um, I just wanted to see the condition of the floor pans. And it's a solid, solid unit. It, 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 if this motor turns over like it does and we can get this to start, it's a perfect candidate for new plugs, wires, cap, rotor button, and a new set of points and a condenser. Clean the carburetor out, put some freshy gas in and we should be good to go. So let's get this thing started so when you go and look at one, you can get yours started too. Or at least find out if it's a candidate that's something that you can buy and you can haggle a little bit with the gentleman or woman or whoever's got it for sale. So first of all, we got the battery, we got your positive and your negative. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the, the negative to it. I have the positive hooked up and I'm just basically hand tightening those. We got the key in it and already I can see a good sign up here and you can see this uh, light on right here in the switch and you can see that really lighting up because it's getting near the end of the evening what the switch does I, i'm not quite sure i'm going to leave it out now and just not mess with it i don't know if that has to do with the ignition or anything like that and when i turn the ignition on the, that light actually goes out so I'm just going to leave that like that. Our main goal today is to see if that motor spins over. If we can get that motor to start today, if it spins over and it starts today, man, that's a win-win right there. I'm going to go to bed happy because then this thing is one step further to getting to where it's a drivable, usable unit. Um, the tire back there is beat up. These tires are, aren't any good, but, but getting some new, new sneakers on this thing is, is no big deal. And some rims uh, or paint those will make it look 100% better. You put new shoes on a bomb, and man, it's, it, it, that bomb looks, looks awesome. So let's get back to the basics. We got the, we got the motor hooked up. And uh, first of all, we're just gonna see if this thing turns over at all. If it spins right now, then we're going to go ahead and work on it to see if we can get it started. I'm going to move it back so we can, we can see what's up. Let's turn the key on, see if it starts. At least see, I know it won't start. Let's just see if it does turn over. We're going to cross our fingers on this. Yeah. Okay, so we're good. This thing's fun and it actually almost started. So that's a that I don't I don't know how that is. Maybe June had put a little bit of gas in here the other day just to see before we got it uh, where we got all the wiring done where the key switch would actually work. But uh, uh, man, I, I'm I'm ecstatic. So let's get back to the basics of getting these things running. Now that we know this thing turned over, and uh, man, I, I'm surprised he must have sprayed some starting fluid or something in there, but then found out the wires weren't hooked up or something wasn't right. And uh, I'm, I'm really impressed that it just started like it did. So let's go ahead and we're just going to take this distributor cap off. It's got two clamps, one in the front and one in the back. And if you look at the distributor cap, this is your this is your condenser. The points are inside. There's some clips here. Sometimes you can pull them like this or you might have to get a little screwdriver. No big deal. Reach around in the back. There's another clip back there. Pop that off remove this distributor cap and let's just move it up out of the way just so it won't fall down on us and you've got your rotor button right here and this thing spins around when that motor spins around and I can show you I can try to spin it by hand you can see that rotor button moving there so let's pop that up off there real gentle I'm just gonna set it off to the side it's got this little dust plate that goes in there and it can only go in there one way with this little 
uh, it's like a little tab that lines up with the square part of the distributor tab in the back right there. So it can only sit on there one way and it can't turn. Get that on out of the way. And now we're down into the actual points. And you can see the points right there. Let's see if I can get you even closer up in there. And you can see the little, the, the distributor is, is kind of oval shaped. It's almost got a high spot right there. So it runs around when it hits that high spot, it, it pushes that cam lobe like that. Bop, bop, bop. And there's little teeny, let's see if I can get you guys even closer in here. Little teeny pads down there that spark. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the motor over since I know it almost started. We know we've got spark. So let's go ahead and get you guys right down in there. Let's see if you guys can see the spark as well. So you can, when you check one of these, you'll see the spark right here on these pads. You can see where it opens and closes right there. And you're gonna see spark right there where those two pads touch. Okay, so all I did was turn it over. I'm here by myself, so I can't really see if there's spark there, but you can see where those two pads touch. Um, that's where our, our, our prime candidate of, if we're not getting spark right there, uh, this thing's never gonna spark, start. And if the condenser doesn't work right, the coil doesn't work right, but it's, it almost started, so I know we've got spark in these points look pretty clean with that dust cap and everything. I don't see any major corrosion. I see a little bit of rust on this shaft of the distributor, um, which we can always clean off to with some emery cloth. And I've got a little piece of emery cloth here or sandpaper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold that in two like this. That way it's got grit on both sides of it, front and back. And let's open up that little, that points patch there where the two connect. And we're gonna put this right down in between those two like so. And, uh, and we're just going to pull it up and down. Don't pull it all the way out, just up and down, just enough to rough those points pads up where we're getting that spark area. And uh, I'm just going to do it. I did it probably about seven times. And I'm going to go ahead and take that rotor button that sat right on here. Remember, it was sitting on top of here like so. I'm going to clean it up in the front because it gets spark right here. And you can see how much cleaner that is now. And there's a little spot on the top here. This looks like it's, it's an old school. It's got a little bit of clear coat right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that just a hair. And up inside here, you can see up inside this distributor cap, it's got your different connections. So as this rotor button spins around, it's actually causing those and the current's going up through the wires. So we're actually gonna just slightly clean those as well. Just real quick, don't, you know, just clean them off a little bit. That way we can get a better, better spark coming out of those points. You can see down in there now. And I'm gonna move you guys back here. And let's move that distributor cap. And I've got some, just some carbon throttle body clean here. Normally I use the CRC, um, just so it doesn't hurt the plastic. I use the non-chlorinated, but I'm just gonna use this as a quick burst just to clean it tonight, just before I tarp it up and put it away. And I'm gonna spray down in there. I'm gonna take that screwdriver and open up those little points and spray a little bit down in there to get that grit off of there that we sprayed. And you want to let that air out um, it, because there's spark in there and this is flammable, it will catch fire. So now that I'm making a mess all over the driveway here, um, I'm actually in front and I'm not over near the shop. I'm going to spray off a little bit of this, uh, this cap, cap as well, just because we just cleaned it. And we want to let that dry as well too, because it will catch fire. So let's go ahead and put this plastic cover back on there. Make sure that dries out. I'm gonna touch it. It's pretty clean. While we're in there, I'm actually gonna use that old uh, uh, sandpaper. Where did I put it here? Clean off the shaft real quick. 
and then I'm going to give it one more quickie spray. I'm going to lightly clean that distributor shaft and see if I can get the motor to turn so I can clean it the whole way. And it'll turn to a certain point and then it'll get hard. So let's see if I can just gang up on it there. Yeah, I'm liking this car. I was hoping the motor was not seized up. And uh, we definitely got, got our wish with it. Normally you get these things and they're just locked up from sitting. I'm gonna keep turning this over little by little. Watch your fingers in there. It'll get pinched in those belts and cut them. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more because I do see a little bit of rust down in there. Right, let's keep, get it over one more time. Last little bit right there. Yeah, and there is a little bit of rust on that distributor shaft. And we don't we don't want that. We want that off of there. Just clean it real lightly and quickly. And I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of spray. Looks good. That dries super, super fast. And it's almost 100% dry in there. Go ahead and put this cap back on, the, the dust uh, cover. Get that rotor button back on, and it'll only go one way. You just spin it till it kind of snaps down in there and it's locked in. And let's go ahead and get that distributor cap back on there. Uh, we cleaned the cap earlier. We cleaned up inside there a little bit. This looks pretty clean as well. There's a little button that goes from your main coil wire. And we can go ahead and hit that real lightly just why, why it's off. That looks good. Put this back on. Can only sit, it can sit on there just one way. It should be nice and snug. You shouldn't be able to turn it left to right. And let's put those clips back on. Check all the wires, check to make sure they're tight. Take this air filter housing off because there's no, uh, the fuel line, that's why I was surprised it started. June and must have sprayed a little something in there or maybe cleaned this, uh, cleaned this air filter out and some of the fumes went into the motor but you got an inline fuel filter that goes right here that's obviously missing. So that there's no gas hooked up to the gas tank or anything. So in order to check this to see if, if it'll fire and actually run, uh, let's take the air filter off. And look down inside there. I don't see anything in there that's obst obstructing it. I'm gonna use a little bit of starting fluid. This is a, a Valvoline starting fluid. Let's get you guys back so you can check everything out. Get a little bit of starting fluid down in there, not much. Maybe about three blasts. And I've got some gas here in this deer park container. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that down in the top. And give a couple pumps on this uh, carburetor. The carburetor linkage doesn't seem to be stuck at all. Uh, I hit it with a little WD-40 earlier. I went kind of over everything, every bolt that I know I'm going to need to be touching tomorrow. I sprayed it tonight with either PB Blaster or WD-40. And uh, let's put the air filter back on lightly. Let's see if we can get this thing to run uh, at least for a couple seconds. All I need it to do is just run for maybe, maybe three seconds, four seconds. That's it. I don't hear any knocks. I don't see any smoke. Um, I don't even hear any any valves tapping. So man, I'm this motor's a solid motor. Whoever had this before the guy who bought it definitely took care of it before he ended up parking it. Probably tarped it up, left it outside to where all the, the moss and uh, just dirt grew on it. And the seats the seats weren't real bad, but the top was totally withered. Uh, I think it's over. It's been sitting over 10 years. It could be 15 more years on it. 
I'm ecstatic. It's going to start. I'm out of here. It's getting late. Keith, two guys how to appreciate tuning in. I'm here. You're there. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with this motor the way it's been and how long it's sat. So check us out next time on phase two of this thing when I give it a bath and really get into it and really start tuning it up and getting it running. I'm out. Keith, two guys how to. See ya. Save that money. I'm not a pig. I'm a lawyer. <laughs>